Okay, folks, welcome again to Jay Wild's cooking experiences, I guess. I don't know what the heck to call it. Um, so I today I'm making a sausage and vegetable pasta, which is really easy to do and really hard to screw up, which is one of the things I like about it. So um, I the first thing I did was salt and oil a pot of water and stick it on to boil for the pasta. Um, and I did that kind of offline as I chopped up my garlic. The reason I decided not to chop the garlic on the audio is that most people um, can, I guess I wouldn't call it cheating. I'd call it actually cutting corners. You can cut corners and buy the pre-minced garlic instead. Um, if you do that, it's about a teaspoon per clove. And again, with this recipe, you can up or lower the garlic depending on what you'd like. Um, I like a lot of garlic, so I always up it, as you know from my last one. So I uh, turn the pan on about medium high, and I put the garlic in um, that I've already chopped up. And then I take the Italian sausage. You can get hot sausage, or um, you can also get uh, mild sausage if you don't want it too spicy. I always get hot, and I get the links and then break them open. Um, you can also just get a tube of sausage and not have to break open each link. So um, I cut them open with a knife, which I have here somewhere. There it is. Um, and then I just take the take them out of their casings and put the inside in the pan. So you want to fry up the sausage. I like to do it with the garlic, so it gives it the garlic flavor. Um, if you don't like a strong garlic flavor, you may want to cook your garlic first take it out and then cook your sausage because um, then the garlic flavor won't be as strong this is like the messiest part i tell you might be easier to buy a tube but i don't think that the um, italian sausage in the tube tastes as good as the links for some reason i don't know maybe i'm just crazy maybe it's the type of sausage i buy <laughs> The type is in the picture. Um, I get it at Aldi's, which I freaking love Aldi's for all kinds of stuff. In fact, I got almost everything in here at Aldi's other than the crushed red pepper. And I will say, if you don't have a thing of crushed red pepper on hand and you're a bachelor or a single person, whatnot, um, you can uh, get those packets from the uh, pizza places and use that instead same crushed red pepper so um we also add extra crushed red pepper because again we like things hot here so um i always say crushed red pepper to your taste but you can start with what the measurement is in the recipe and go from there or if you really don't like hot stuff um you can leave it out too so i think it just adds a little bit of flavor you could always put some pepper in it instead instead of crushed red pepper Okay, so I've almost got these sausages out. And then you want to fry those up with the garlic. So I took this recipe, it actually I found it online um, as broccoli and sauce broccoli and sausage cavatini. Um, I am not a huge fan of cavatini pasta. So I just say pasta, and you can choose whatever kind of pasta you like. I wouldn't, I don't think it would go great with spaghetti, um, but just about everything else, like I'm using tricolored rotini is my favorite to use. So um, that's what I think works best with it. So this will take a little while to uh, fry up. So instead of sitting here and rambling um, as it cooks, I will come back once um, it is brown. You just want to make sure that the sausage is cooked all the way through, that it's nice and brown. And once your water boils, you can add your pasta at any time because you'll be tossing it back in so you can cook. My water is boiling. I don't know if you can hear it. So you can cook your pasta whenever your water boils. It doesn't matter. And then just drain it off and let it sit. So, um, yeah. So I'll pause this for a minute and I'll be right back. Ah. So I've got the pasta on, um, it is boiling. <clears throat> I've set a timer and I'm cooking the sausage. One thing I think I should probably put in these posts is what what kind of uh, cook things you need. Um, 
cookware, whatnot. The uh, you'll need a pot and a skillet for this, and then I'd say at least one colander. I like to use two, um, so you can let the pasta sit if it gets done before the sausage, and you have to drain both. So, um, but yeah, you just kind of keep breaking the sausage up and stirring it with the garlic, and letting it uh, cook to a nice brown. And make sure you always want to make sure sausage is cooked. You can use other meats. Um, I think sausage adds a really good flavor to this, but you could try chicken or beef or whatnot. Just make sure again you cook it up. You might want to add some spices if you use a different meat. Um, I would recommend like if you use chicken, maybe uh, adding some Cajun flavor to it or um, let's see what else would go good. Um, you could go like a Italian, like an Italian spice mix or just oregano and parsley and thyme. Um, I think beef probably wouldn't need to be seasoned too much. Um, you could also do this dish with uh, uh, chorizo and do Mexican sausage and it would probably taste pretty good. I would make sure the chorizo is good and drained though because that stuff gets really greasy um, you do want to make sure to stir your noodles as they boil um, I put mine on for nine minutes but I know my stove <laughs> and I know that it always takes the maximum over the minimum amount of time I've got an older stove so um, it doesn't cook as well as I think it should um, but yeah so just need two pots and two colanders, pretty much. They say um, in the recipe to toss it all in a bowl. I just toss it all in the skillet, and that way you can keep it warm if you make it like ahead of time for dinner. Um, so since you already have everything in there anyway, all you're adding is the noodles, because by the end of this, everything else will be in here. The noodles and the cheese, the Parmesan cheese. Which I think I forgot to put in the original picture of all the ingredients. So it is missing Parmesan cheese. Which, again, if you don't like Parmesan, that's an easy step to leave out. Um, it just adds a little bit of flavor, really. It's not that big of a deal. This is like a, a really, like for the vegetables. If you really like broccoli, you can do this with broccoli. You can do this with fresh vegetables or frozen. Um, I would say pick what you like. And just make sure you have at least 16 ounces of vegetables. Um, or I like I just get two bags, 12 ounce, and do 24 ounces because then it just makes the dish last longer. And you get more vegetables because, you know, vegetables are supposed to be good for you, I guess. <laughs> um, I picked the California blend. Uh, one, because it's easy. <laughs> And I like broccoli and cauliflower and carrots. Um, but I've done it with uh, just basic mis mixed vegetables or um, green beans. I've done it with fresh broccoli um, and mushrooms. Really, there's there's no wrong combination. Um, I did have a Chinese restaurant recently. I think, I don't know if they couldn't uh, tell it apart or if they got a weird delivery and decided to go ahead and try it. But my Chinese dish that was supposed to be made with zucchini was made with um, cooked cucumber. And I tell you what, cooked cucumber is a very weird flavor. So I don't recommend putting cucumber in it. I don't recommend cooking cucumber at all, really. I think it's just much better raw. So it's looking like the sausage is pretty much done. Um, yep. So then we want to drain it. So you put your strainer in the sink. Whenever you drain meat, um, if you didn't know, you always want to make sure to run hot water so that the grease does not clog up your drain. So I start the hot water first. And then you take the meat, spoon it into the colander so that it drains some of the grease off. Um, if you choose like chicken sausage, um, which is another option if you want something healthier or turkey sausage. You may not need to drain it. Um, another thing you want to make sure is that your garlic is bigger than your colander or you want to cook your garlic separately. 
because then it'll go right through the colander and all your garlic will be gone, which is bad. So after you strain the meat, wow, now it's nice and quiet, isn't it? Okay. Um, strain the meat and the garlic and you put it back in the pan like so. You want to add your diced or crushed tomatoes with the juice. Do not drain them. Pour the whole thing in there. You want to make sure to stir that up nicely. Keep an eye on your noodles as they cook. There we go. Then, as that's in there, sorry, I like to rinse out my colander so that grease doesn't set on it. Take your vegetables and oh, let's take a picture of the tomatoes. So you guys have that? Okay. Take your vegetables and you open them however they see fit to open. I cut mine with a knife. You want to make sure you're more at like a medium now on your uh, your heat level on your stove. You add your bag or bags of vegetables or your um, fresh vegetables, whatnot. You want to make sure those are all chopped up and ready to go before you start this. It's your mise en place or whatever the fuck they call it. So you take your vegetables and you stir those in. And that will quiet this down really quickly because they're cold as hell. There it goes. So you stir those into your meat and tomatoes. This is when I throw in the crushed red pepper. Now, I've been doing this for a while, so I've learned about how much I need for the pan for our taste buds. So I would measure it if I were you, but I'm just that good. I've been making this for like six or seven years. So this is one of family favorites and favorite of many guests that come to our house. The ones that like garlic, you know. And vegetables so we have our vegetables in there all nice and snug so then you take ah oh, looks like it's almost about to go off for the pasta take a lid which one you hear my pots and pans banging my lid was kind of buried in there and you cover that and you want it to simmer there goes the pasta beep. You want it to simmer for about 10 minutes. So again, instead of jawing your ear off while it simmers, I'm going to put this on hold and drain the pasta. I'll just keep it in the colander while that cooks. And then we'll combine everything and I'll come back to talk about that. Be right back. Okay, so now that your uh, vegetables are cooked, um, you want to make sure they're not mushy, but they're, you know, if they're frozen, that they're at least warm. Um, if you have fresh vegetables, it may take closer to 15 minutes, depending on what you have. Broccoli takes a little bit longer to cook. Um, I would just keep checking them and make sure they're at the consistency that you like. So then you take the lid off and you dump the pasta in and you stir the pasta into the vegetables and meat. And I will have a picture of what the finished product is. Oh, and you add the Parmesan cheese, too. If you want to add more crushed red pepper at this point, you can. Um, but yeah, you just top the Parmesan cheese and kind of stir it in so it gets across the across the whole dish. Um, and you can add as little or as much as you like of just about everything in this. So, And there you have uh, sausage, pasta, and vegetables. So... I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, and I hope that you uh, bachelors out there um, enjoy having this for lunch or dinner. Or it just it seems to like even taste better on the next day. So sometimes even the third and fourth day it tastes better. So we love having this for leftovers. So I always make a full batch, and um, my kids don't eat it, so my husband and I can eat off of it for days. So enjoy. Thank you for listening, and uh, it was one of my shorter audios. The, uh, <laughs> the lasagna took a whole lot longer, so this is very, very easy. If you have any questions or comments, um, again, please feel free to message or PM me, 
and um, any requests, also feel free to message and PM me. I know how to cook quite a lot of stuff. So, and definitely know how to cook a lot of easy stuff because, you know, kids. So (laughs) have a great week. Bye.